Ja pozwolę sobie zadać pierwsze, pierwsze dwa, trzy pytania, a później będzie jeszcze czas na rozmowę krótką z publicznością. Todd Field hasn't made a movie in over 15 years. How did the two of you uh, get together to make uh, this collaboration uh, possible? How did you find one another? Todd Field nie zrealizował filmu przed tym od ponad 15 lat, a zatem jak to się stało, że ci dwa, dwaj panowie się spotkali i ich wspólnym dziełem jest ten film. Uh, he called me. <laughs> I don't know. Why you? <laughs> yeah. I really don't know, and I I never I never really ask because um, I I loved his uh, his films, and especially in the bedroom is a very seminal film for me because I I remembered well I it was a few years after I'd graduated from film school, and not only did I really enjoy the film, but I thought it was also it has this really strong visceral power in terms of what art house film can actually do. And it was just at the point in my life, it was just a really, you know, a beautiful film. And I remember that moment very well. So uh, it was last April, it was April 2021, and uh, I was still shooting Pachinko in uh, Vancouver. Um, and I had read about that he's, he was making a film and just by chance somebody wrote me an email and said, um, there's this director and he wants to, he wants to uh, chat with you. And of course, you know, he could have sent me the telephone directory of New York City. I would have photographed that. <laughs> so I never asked him. And when we finally met in Berlin, eight, uh, nine weeks later, we just came out the gate running. You know, we, we just had to start uh, scouting so much. And so I never asked that question. Po prostu do mnie zadzwonił. Chodziło o to, jak się znaleźli. Tak naprawdę nigdy nie zadał Todowi Fieldowi tego pytania, ale dla autora zdjęć wcześniejsze filmy Fielda, zwłaszcza In the Bedroom, były bardzo ważne. To był film, który oglądał nasz gość niedługo po ukończeniu szkoły filmowej. Teraz, mówiąc już o współczesnych czasach, realizował serial Pacinko w Vancouver i wtedy dowiedział się, że jest zainteresowanie ze strony reżysera jego osobą. Stwonili się, spotkali później w Berlinie. Dużo było prac nad znalezieniem odpowiednich miejsc zdjęciowych, a zatem to pytanie tak naprawdę nigdy nie padło. When it comes to the visuals uh, of the film, um, they give us some clues about the very complicated outer and inner world uh, of the protagonist of the film, Lydia Tarr. I suspect that uh, at least some uh, viewers uh, have lots of questions about the meaning, the content of the film. But what I would like to ask you is uh, how you approached uh, visually these different layers uh, of her world so as to make it easier for the audience perhaps to decipher the complexity of her character. Moje pytanie związane jest z tym, że tkanka fabularna tego filmu jest bardzo skomplikowana, a zatem być może i wy macie dużo pytań odnośnie tego, jak ten film interpretować, ale prawdopodobnie znajdują się tu pewne wskazówki wizualne, a zatem jak panowie, mówię tu o reżyserze i autorze zdjęć, zdefiniowali zarówno zewnętrzny, jak i wewnętrzny świat głównej bohaterki tego filmu i te wszystkie skomplikowane rzeczy, które się w głębi jej duszy i nie tylko dzieją. I mean, I think that one of the key um, responsibilities of the cinematography in this film is actually not to get away, to not to give answers. And a lot of our conversations were about uh, restraint, like not to push something onto the audience. Uh, it was about holding back. Um, Todd has this line, don't gild the lily. Uh, and I have this line, don't put a hat on a hat. And I think that's, that was one of the very fundamental conversations we had the entire time, like don't get in the way and hold back and observe. I was hoping you'd give us some answers, but I guess not. 
Jeżeli, głównym zadaniem autora zdjęć w tym filmie z punktu widzenia ich obu było to, żeby nie udzielać widzom odpowiedzi, żeby właściwie praca kamery była na tyle niejednoznaczna, by interpretacja nie narzucała się w jakikolwiek sposób. Według Tora Filda, który ma powiedzenie nie zabijaj Lili, według Floriana nie kłać ręki na kapeluszu. Chodziło o to samo, o to, żeby nie narzucać się obrazem, a raczej zrobić krok albo dwa do tyłu. So in that, oh, but there's maybe one thing to add. I think because it's a, you know, to me it's it's a philosophical question also in the sense is because we as cinematographers, you know, you have an intuition and you have a sense for beauty and you have, you know, the urge to shape. You know, and it's first, you know, if you do it for a long time, it becomes almost a, a reflex, like an organic feeling that you see something and you go, so, oh no, I want to show it like this, you know. So it was really about going back to, you know, the asking you what is the absolute minimum or why do you want to do it? Because sometimes we just beautify for the sense of beautifying. To jest dla mnie pytanie natury filozoficznej, dlatego że intuicją autora zdjęć jest to, żeby pokazywać rzeczy obrazem, często w sposób piękny, żeby je wręcz upiększać, a w tym przypadku musiałem gdzieś cofnąć się w moim rozumowaniu do tego, jak przedstawić rzeczywistość przy użyciu minimalnych środków. Go ahead. No, I can just one last because yeah. you have to translate and I tend to st not stop. Um, and that was a quite practical process. It was not abstract. We didn't talk about it endlessly. So say we had pre-configured a sequence with Kate and we had thought, well, maybe we move in with the camera. And Todd has a very, very high uh, visual sensitivity. He's absolutely focused on the image and he he registers every little change. So we would maybe do the first rehearsal with the track. And then, you know, we said, ah, oh, well, it doesn't feel right. Let's only track in a little bit, maybe at the end. And then we tracked in a little bit. And then in the end we said, don't track. <laughs> To były również rozmowy czysto praktyczne. Todd Field, autor tego filmu, jest bardzo wrażliwy od strony wizualnej. I w trakcie prób Staraliśmy się najpierw realizować ujęcia z takim bardziej narzucającą się pracą kamery, czyli na przykład był, był najazd kamerą na postać graną przez Kate Blanchett. Todd oglądał materiały i mówił, no nie, może jednak to zmniejszmy trochę i w drugiej próbie był tylko taki minimalny najazd, a wreszcie okazało się, że kiedy przyszło do realizacji sceny, to zrobili ją już bez żadnego najazdu. But there are scenes that are absolutely spectacular uh, in your film from a technical standpoint. The uh, class that she is teaching at Juilliard um, is a long scene that is taken in a single uninterrupted uh, take. So if you can give us a little more information about the logistics of shooting it, that will be great. Ale są w tym filmie również sceny spektakularne same w sobie, jak choćby lekcja czy wykład, jakiego udziela główna bohaterka na uczelni Juilliarda. To jest jedno nieprzerwane ujęcie. Proszę o wyjaśnienie logistyki twórczej tego właśnie ujęcia. Yeah, um, I mean, that was actually overall for the entire film the interesting challenge, you know, that restraint and simplicity is not necessarily technically easy. <laughs> actually, my, from my experience, it's technically the most difficult. Um, so that sequence uh, was always con uh, conceived as a single shot and Todd was very adamant, or not say as, a, as an unedited sequence, call it this way, because the term single shot sometimes implies a bit of, you know, like artist, an artistic endeavor. Obviously, we did not want anybody to feel this is a single shot. You gotta say when you want to cut Okay, it. I'll, I'll let yeah, you yeah. think about it some more. Yeah. Te sceny, które wymagały szczególnego wycofania się, jeśli chodzi o bardzo ostrą pracę kamery, były zresztą najtrudniejsze do realizacji. 
W przypadku tej, o którą ja się zapytałem, czyli wykładu na uczelni Giuliarda, chodziło o to, żeby nie rzucało się w oczy to, że ta scena jest zrobiona w jednym ujęciu. Zresztą sam reżyser bardziej opisuje ją jako scenę, w której nie ma ani jednego cięcia montażowego. So the idea was that when you read the scene, of course, there's multiple layers of reality and, you know, the character. So we, if we had shot it traditionally, we would have set something like 35 setups to cover that scene. So we wanted to remain, uh, you know, to have those visual moments, but we wanted to have Kate drive the editorial process. So she is like the, 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 the machine that drives us through and that the decisions are not done in the edit room. So that was the idea. So we had this location with a you know, room with no windows and uh, newly built and uh, in a gallery in, in Berlin. Uh, it was uh, so, and then you go to school on it. You know, that's a phrase that Todd likes to use, by the way. So we went to school on it. So we thought we'd take a crane or there were no way to get a crane into that building. Then we thought of building a rig under the ceiling. That would have been a disaster as well. So in the end, we ended up with, a, you know, building this scaffolding rig with a, um, a um, stabilized head on it. And, uh, you know, Sam Mendes has done it extensively on 1917, but it was the same deal. People were carrying this rig around and, you know, then we shot it. And, and it was, uh, we rehearsed a single day um, and then uh, I still remember on the morning of the first shooting day, it, it really worked on the first take. Absolutely crazy. I mean, she plays the piano, I still get goosebumps. And on the last, I swear to God, it's, I don't make this up, on the last 10 frames, we had a glitch, you know, somebody, and we go like, oh God, you know. <laughs> and then we took another 12 takes, but we got it, you know. <laughs> it w przypadku realizacji tej sceny, no rzeczywiście była ona skomplikowana normalnie, gdyby była zrealizowana przy cięciach montażowych, to byłoby to pewnie z 35 różnych ujęć. Tu zadecydowaliśmy, że będziemy kamerą podążać za Kate. Ona jest motorem tego, jak cała warstwa wizualna przekazuje informacje widzowi. No i później padło tylko pytanie, które staraliśmy się rozwiązać w różny sposób, jak to praktycznie ma wyglądać. Nie było właściwie żadnej możliwości, żeby dźwig, który by operował w ramach przestrzeni, która była dostępna. Trzeba było zbudować rusztowanie przenośne, które po prostu podążało za główną bohaterką i to była jedna forma, jaką dało się w tym przypadku zastosować. Zresztą już po próbach z Kate Blanchett byliśmy przygotowani na tyle dobrze, że pierwsze ujęcie udało nam się fantastycznie. Wszystko szło idealnie, aż do ostatnich dziesięciu klatek dosłownie, kiedy coś zaczęło się sypać. No i musieliśmy to zrobić jeszcze raz i jeszcze raz i w sumie było 12 dubli, aż uzyskaliśmy taki efekt, efekt jaki nam Odpowiadał. I'm looking at the clock. We have another between 10 and 15 minutes. Uh, so let's go to the questions from the audience. Prosimy państwa o pytania. We have two microphones in the audience. Please raise your hands if you'd like to ask anything of our guest and uh, we'll take it from there. I see a hand there and maybe one on this side, but we're going to start with you. I don't know. Uh, I have a question because you said that the Juilliard scene was like mostly rehearsed and that was just perfect. You did it one day, but there's like much more, like there's many scenes that are just one take and Kate or other characters driving the camera. Was it like you just rehearsed it or was it like, okay, you Kate, Kate, you do what you do and then the operator just follows her or was it all rehearsed? Because it doesn't feel like it's rehearsed. Oprócz tej sceny w Juilliardzie jest wiele innych, w których kamera podąża za Kate. Czy to było wszystko efektem prób, czy też po prostu Kate miała swobodę tego, jak się poruszać, a kamera za nią po prostu podążała? No, everything is designed. Yeah, yeah. 
Nie, wszystko było z góry określone. One has to really, you know, that's also taught, you know, real. I mean, I think he's an ter- incredibly brave director and uh, he's, uh, uh, that's, you know, the way he works. It's, it's all about precision in ev- for every, I mean, just uh, the props on this. I mean, just the time people went through to create these scores. It's every detail, everything is planned, everything is exactly as he wants it. Dla Toda Fielda niesamowicie ważna jest precyzja każdego ujęcia, jest wręcz obsesyjnie szczegółowy. Jak przyjrzycie się dokładnie najróżniejszym elementom tego filmu, to zauważycie to właściwie w każdym ujęciu. Prosimy o kolejne pytania. More questions, please. Is there anyone on this side? All the way down, if you can pass the microphone, that will be good. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned that, that uh, you hit the ground running, but at any point did you and Todd have a, a heart-to-heart or, or uh, talk theoretically about the look and what kind of references did you use and, or did you just sort of find it together? How did you guys get on the same page? Pytanie związane z tym, czy oprócz tych informacji, które już otrzymaliśmy, były jakieś dłuższe rozmowy między reżyserem i autorem zdjęć, jakieś punkty odniesienia, jak to się stało, że myśleli w bardzo podobny sposób? Yeah, what I, I personally really like to do is uh, I like to shoot tests very early on, you know, very uh, the classical things that we all do, you know, cameras, lenses. Um, so I try to actually get into, um, to open a little bit of a space, a creative space in which, you know, the director and myself, we can resonate. Ideally, those tests, the first ones, you know, I would do by myself, maybe after we have spoken for four or five weeks, you know, into prep. And I think that's a very good uh, possibility for me to show what I think I have understood um, from what he has been saying. And as a little side note, I mean, if you work with a true auteur, which I consider Todd to be, you know, he's a writer, director and producer of the film. My first position as a DOP is, of course, to listen. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to argue interpretation of the script with him. You know, he has taken the leap to start, you know, the journey in front of the blank page, which is something I respect tremendously. So when you do these tests then you uh, you know he will resonate with it he would say oh i like this i don't like this and he had this phrase which i really enjoy some of the stuff i shot he said this looks fantastic but that looks like a movie with a capital m and that to me was a real catchphrase i thought okay i get it you know and then um you shoot more so i tested for about three months on and off like sometimes little things there's this the march of tar we said you know when she's always walking He was working with Hildur Gunnarsdottir very early on the score, so he knew the beats per second. So we would, in the office, we had a little long corridor, we would set up a track, and I would just shoot, you know, some lenses, just to see, you know, how close would we want to be, how far would it be observational. This is all to say, you, you start, ma- I, I try to start making things as early as I can, because um, references are always, we just ha- didn't have the time, we never watched a film together. And I, I also think we were genuinely trying to find something that was very specific to this adventure and to the surprise of it. So the more you can do practically by the time you actually hit the, you know, hit production, we had already shot, you know, five, six days of tests and we had been in cinemas together. That's kind of how we grew together. You know. Moje podejście do sztuki filmowej jest takie, że jako autor zdjęć staram się robić bardzo wcześnie testy wszystkich możliwości obrazu, które w tym filmie mogłyby być użyte, po to, aby ta paleta wspólnych możliwości była jak najszersza. A zatem przez 4 czy 5 tygodni starałem się zrealizować najróżniejsze ujęcia, po to by je pokazać później Todowi. I tak zresztą zrobiliśmy. Jego reakcja była taka, że niektóre ujęcia były fantastyczne, ale dla niego takie zbyt filmowe, to znaczy zbyt narzucające się, jeśli chodzi o ich formę obrazu. I uwaga, taka mała dygresja ze strony naszego gościa jest taka, że w przypadku pracy ze wszystkimi 
prawdziwymi artystami filmowymi, a uważa Toda Filda za właśnie taką postać, czyli osobami, które piszą własny scenariusz od zera, ten projekt tworzą, później film reżyserują, są również producentami swojego filmu. On właściwie słucha ich, a nie narzuca im czegokolwiek. Tutaj ta wspólna praca polegała również na opanowaniu wizualnym tych przestrzeni, w których zdjęcia były realizowane i wcześniejszych prób w kilku kluczowych lokalizacjach, które dla tego filmu były niezbędne i to właśnie ten okres próbny później sprawił, że pracowało im się razem dużo lepiej. Do we have other questions? On, I'm just alternating. Is there anyone on this side that I see or I don't? There's a hand down. If, you st if not, then let's go here, on the left side. Thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to thank you for this movie, and it was absolutely touching, and I must say that very important for now, and I'm still shaking personally after watching it. And uh, my question is, um, I wanted to ask and say, because uh, about the vision of the dreams, and about the visions during the actual life when she saw the black dog and she was absolutely scared we could feel i i could feel that it's the start when her life is falling apart and it was was it connected with her dream when she was burning during her sleep and also how are you working on this kind of visions if you are creating it with this director with the director or it was written on the script and you were figuring out how to present it in the movie Film był bardzo poruszający pytanie związane jest ze scenami snów i chodzi tu między innymi o, o te sny, które ewidentnie następują, kiedy bohaterka leży w łóżku, ale również na przykład o tę scenę, kiedy widzi psa, czyli ma przywidzenia i jasne się staje i dla niej, i dla widowni, że jej życie zaczyna się rozsypywać. Czy to było określone w scenariuszu, jak powstały od strony wizualnej te właśnie ujęcia? Yeah, um, I mean, the interpretation, I as an audience member, as I am a member of this audience, as you all are, I leave to you, you know, it would not be my place to put the dots together. I think it's very legitimate what you say. Um, and I think the structure of the film that we discussed was always be open. You know, it should allow exactly that kind of access. And visually that means for me to have a certain proximity to the characters, to you know, create a certain spatial feel, that's very important for me, so that there's an immersive experience, so when you see something in a single shot, you can also, your eye can wander and you can take in the room and all of this. Um, the particular sequences in these uh, night, in, or in-betweens, Todd would refer to as motor. So motor is the stuff that keeps the stones together. That was also the title of the composition that Hildur did for this, and it was, we just built this black box It, it was actually a conversation between him and Kate that kind of gave birth to this idea that there should be a place where she meets herself, you know, intimately. <clears throat> so we built this box, and the box would travel with us, it was all black, and then yeah, every actor was shot on it, even a snake in Thailand <laughs> on the last shooting day. We took Kate and a snake. <laughs> Struktura tego filmu jest na tyle otwarta, jeśli chodzi o możliwości interpretacyjne, że nie będziemy tutaj nawet próbować w jakikolwiek sposób objaśniać znaczenia tych scen, ale ta interpretacja zaproponowana przez osobę zadającą pytanie zresztą jest, jest, jest bardzo ciekawa. Natomiast w przypadku tych właśnie ujęć, majaków, snów czy przywidzeń, Chodziło o to, żeby być bardzo blisko postaci. To była taka czarna 
przestrzeń bardzo osobista dla postaci granej przez Kate Blanchett. Nazwaliśmy to czarnym pudełkiem, w którym ona mogłaby spotykać się z samą sobą. I rzeczywiście od strony nawet stworzenia takiej przestrzeni, kiedy już ją mieliśmy, to później korzystaliśmy z niej podczas całej realizacji filmu i wszystkie te sceny, nawet z wężem, czyli w scenie, która ma miejsce w Azji, to było również kręcone właśnie w, tym, w tej przestrzeni. Mortar, czyli zaprawa murarska, to jest tak, jak Todd Field określał te elementy filmu, ale nie wdając się w dalsze możliwości interpretacji. I think we have time for one more question before we go, uh, so let's go here. Okay, I try to be fast. <laughs> um... Yeah, could you, because I, I really like the blocking in the film, like how, how was the process on that, like did he work something out with the actors before and then, then he went to you and then he said, okay, I want to see that and that, or was it all like, ah, this has to be in that shot and that angle here and then... Pytanie dotyczy ustawienia aktorów w tym filmie i pracy reżysera z aktorami. Let me piggyback on this, because this is going to be last question, in terms of what Kate Blanchett herself brought into the final shape of the movie. Well, I personally feel very comfortable not knowing exactly, you know, when I go to work in the morning, not knowing exactly where the camera is going to go. Um, because I think if you spend a lot of time together, you will know where the, there's only so many things where you can put the camera in the first place. Um, I think, I don't really remember this anymore because it was a very organic collaboration. The way I recall it, it's definitely, they do a lot, they did a lot of rehearsals to find the tone. And mostly his blocking is so visual anyway, that, you know, there's basically two places. So the discussion is only, about, you know, do you want to go editorial? Do you want to cut or don't you want to cut? If we don't want to cut, then this has technical implications as well as creative ones, you know, how to set the light and build the light so that, you know, people can consume, you know, receive the frame as we want them to receive it. So that's that. So um, I, I, I seem to remember that it was always blocked and then I think there's also a moment of intimacy. You know, I might join the blocking a little later, just sit quietly in the corner. It was a very, very concentrated atmosphere on set. Todd doesn't really like lots of noise. You know, it was really quiet. That's a little bit like here, we just went through the day. And Kate is, you know, obviously when you get a film where she stars in, I didn't really expect to have problems with the performance. <laughs> she is spectacular. But I think she immersed herself into this in an, you know, to an extent that was just really impressive. And that kind of, then that pushes everybody's bar up really extreme. You know, if you have somebody who works, she's, you know, she would basically rehearse the piano everywhere there were, where there was a piano. It was like she was constantly living living the character and I was very, very, I feel very privileged to having had the opportunity to work on that film. You know, it's a very rich experience as a DOP. So I'm gonna, before you translate, because it will be truthfully, I'm terribly sorry, I would really love to spend more time and maybe have a drink, but I will have to go because otherwise I get fired and then I'll never work again. Mm. So I really appreciate your, all your attention and your time and your question. I'm sorry that we can't answer all. And I'm not going to translate it. Uh, I'm just going to shake your hand and let you go. Florian Hofmeister. Thanks.